Okay, everybody, welcome back to part four of our playthrough for Metroid 2 Return of Samus. And where we picked up, we had 12 Metroids left to go. And we are about in section six, if I remember correctly. And with this particular section of the game, we entered into an area where we have a few Gammas left. And we're also going to have a brand new Metroid type that we haven't seen before. Before we go encountering those Metroids, we want to go pick up a missile upgrade that we left behind here. We could have got it before the last save, but we were just in a hurry to get out of there. So go underneath the water, over to the left in the ball, there's your Metroid top. Missile upgrade. There you go. Now we're going to go back up through the hatchling pod and continue on to find the rest of these Metroids in this particular section here. So we're going to seek out what's left, continue back over left. We're going to go far over and then down over to the left here. So you'll see exactly what I mean. We're going to go back up this section here, back to the save point, and then continue over left. And we are going to find this brand new Metroid type that we've yet to encounter. And wait till you see what it is. It's definitely tougher and more tricky than the other ones that we faced up to this point. So go all the way down this shaft, bare to the left. Watch out for these little enemies here. Don't go all the way down like this. There's nothing down there. But even if you do go down there, not a big deal. So just space jump your way back up over to the left. And you're going to come across a spiked area here. This is a good opportunity to test your space jumping skills. Very good opportunity indeed. Otherwise, you're going to get hit big time. And you're going to want that health for this new Metroid type. It's flashing. What is it? It's going to pop out of a Gamma shell. And this is a Zeta Metroid. Yes. Zeta Metroids are definitely tougher, as you can see. They actually fly behind you. They're far more cunning. They cannot be shot from above or below, and, as I mentioned previously, they take 20 missile shots to kill. So, definitely tougher, but the good thing is, once you get a line on them, you can fire a whole bunch of shots into them, and you can take them down relatively easily. The problem is getting the clear line of fire. So generally, what you're probably going to want to do is get onto a level field here, like right here, and thankfully we took it down, but you got to be careful standing right next to the edge of the screen because, of course, it can push you all the way off the screen back out, and then you've got a whole bunch of missiles that have been wasted here. So good thing is we got that one down out of the way, and we did lose quite a bit of energy, which sucks, but thankfully there are not one but two energy tanks that you could pick up here to refill your health. Now the problem is, the second one is kind of redundant, because in this game you can only have a maximum of five energy tanks. So the only point to getting the sixth energy tank would be to refill your energy all the way up to the max. Not really necessary for this run, of course, but we will show you where to get both of them, just in case you are low on health and you want to see them both. Take your pick which one you want to get. Alright, now... You could go back over to the right and save if you really want to. We're not in that desperate need of it because I'm pretty sure we're not going to die again up to this point. I've looked at the map up ahead. I feel pretty confident in myself even if we are down half of a light bar here. So at this point we're going to continue to go all the way up. There's a couple ways of course. You could space jump your way up or if you're failing epically like I am, you could opt to turn into the spider ball and continue to go up. Now right here, I'm going to show you an interesting section here. Go over to the right continue going over and this is where you have a choice of beams yes every beam in the game is available here but the only one we care about is the one in this first door so go in here blast open that ball and here it is at long last the ice beam now again we could have gotten this ice beam way back at the start of the game but we're choosing to get it now because we do need it to finish the game and of course, just in case you don't know what the Ice Beam does, it will freeze just about any enemy in the game in place, including a lot of the big Metroids, but not the bosses and the sub-bosses, of course. So, we will not be using it until the very end when we have to freeze those final eight Metroids. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So for right now, we put it in our back pocket and we continue to climb up this hall. If we were playing a less restricted game, we would probably go with one of the other beam types, probably the Wave. I've always been a fan of the Wave beam, especially in the original NES. That thing was a lifesaver, in particular sections in Brinstar. But I digress. Getting back to this game type. So we're going to continue climbing up north. We're going to find a lot of different missile and energy tank upgrades. We're going to grab those, as well as Samus's final suit upgrade, which is not critical, not... Absolutely necessary, but certainly helpful for a lot of these later enemy types, which you'll be seeing. All right, as we cross over that spike pit, we now enter into a fight with another Gamma Metroid. This one isn't too tough. Just get it in a clear line. You can shoot it up, down, left, or right. We all know that by now. Only 10 missile shots. These are fairly simplistic at this point. I love seeing Gamma Metroids at this point in the game. And that should just about do it with one or two more shots. If this thing would come down out of the sand, we could kill it rather easily here. I really hate and detest how they do that there. It's just a complete tease. Get out of the sand, please. 
This is so annoying, and there's really no way to get up there. I mean, you could screw attack it if you had the screw attack, but of course it's not going to damage it. Uh, thankfully, it didn't matter that much, and we took it down. So that's one more Gamma Metroid out of the way. And as you can see, we have ten total Metroids left, nine plus the Queen. And we're going to space jump our way, hopefully, all the way back across this pit. But you know what? Even if we fail, like we are doing really badly right now, I'm not too concerned because... Actually, maybe I should be concerned. This is pretty bad. <laughs> there is an energy tank refill. Not only an energy tank, but also a full energy refill and a missile tank refill. Wow, this is pretty ugly. Uh, just, yeah, don't pay attention here. This is not a good showing by me. But again, maybe I'm playing kind of loosey-goosey here because I know what's coming up here, so I have some energy and some missiles to spare. But getting back to the point, we're going to continue to go up here all the way up this left shaft. There will be a lot of goodies up here, so fear not. Even if you come out of here looking like Swiss cheese like I am right now, it's not the end of the world. So we're going to continue to space jump up here, damage boost yourself if you need to. we got to be really careful. We're down to 94, 86. Holy Lord. Uh, maybe I should start playing a little more seriously now. Normally, I, I've been described as a clutch player in a lot of different game types, especially MK2. Normally, when I get into these situations, I bear down and I tend to play my best, but I really shouldn't get into a habit like that because clearly you can't always count on that, especially against human players in certain game types. So, anyway, we are just about to the point where we need to be. And, of course, these things you cannot kill if you shoot them head on, but a lot of times they will give you missiles, energies, so... In this case, we got nothing. We got trolled. Okay, now we're going to head over this way. A few things you want to point out. There is a shaft you can go down in the middle here. Also, you can head over to the left up here, or you can spider ball to the right on the wall. It really does not make that much of a difference. Both will lead to the exact same thing. But for this case, in this playthrough, we're going to spider ball up left, and we're going to show you what's up here. Some definite nice things. Spider all the way up. You could jump up and space jump, but you do need to spider ball eventually because, as you've seen previously, this might look kind of familiar, you will need to bomb the ceiling from the spider ball. And this has always been very frustrating and annoying. If you think back to part two of this playthrough, I think it was, we had to do this quite a bit and we were failing terribly and we had to edit and zip through a lot of it. Thankfully, I've learned my lesson from my previous playthrough here and I think we get through it just fine. The piece of advice I would give is to make sure that you roll and bomb at the same time. Don't try to finagle the controls as you're right there, or you will obviously have some major issues here. There's a missile tank upgrade. That's kind of nice, but that's not the only thing. You also have an energy tank here. So that was sorely needed, of course. That will max out our energy tank reserves, and it will max out our complete energy here. Now, you could go all the way back down to the left, or you could go this way to the right, which is where I'm going to go because eventually we are going to have to go down this right-hand shaft for more upgrades and more suit upgrades and eventually find the rest of the Metroids in this I call Section 6. So we're going to continue to roll down with the Spider Ball here, and I will show you the next section. We're going to continue to roll along, and we're going to have our next Metroid type coming over here to the right. We're going to have another Spike Pit to jump across with the Space Jump, and this is where you definitely want to try your best here because we just took the time to refill our energy. We don't want to have that go to waste. Now, we have a sand pit here. What can that mean? Well, looking at my offline map, I know there's supposed to be a Metroid here. I am hoping and praying it is not one of the Zeta Metroids. That was when I <laughs> went through this playthrough initially. And I thought to myself, oh my lord, I know how annoying those Gammas were when they were in the sand. Can I imagine playing a Zeta? Well, we're about to find out here because look very closely and carefully. We know what the Zetas look like from the first one. They are flashing and blinking gammas, which will shed their skin. Try to peer through the sand and you tell me what you see here. We're going to keep on moving through here. Just a few more blocks of sand to bust through. And if you look off on the right side, there is our Metroid. Now the question is, is it a Gamma or is it something worse? Well, it's not flashing, so thankfully it is a Gamma. Now, the problem is we are completely encased in sand. There is nowhere to go, nowhere to hide. But fortunately, these Gammas are not that difficult, so it's not that big of a concern. Ten shots, of course, will do it. Just keep firing away. That was not as difficult as I thought it would be. So that leaves us with nine remaining, eight plus the Queen. We're going to do a little sand backtracking here since we can't use the beam, we got to use the bomb, so we'll catch you on the flip when we get out of here. Okay, that wasn't too rough. Now we're just going to continue to jump over the spike pit here with our space jump. We've gotten some pretty good practice with it here. And we're going to continue to move down this shaft to the left, but also there are some things over to the left that we haven't seen quite yet. 
Before we do that, we'll check this out. There's an energy tank. Now you cannot get it straight down. You can't even bomb through the Metroid shell. So again, this is completely optional. You don't need the energy tank, but there is also a missile upgrade down there. So you do want to go down here. However, there's one problem. It is completely pitch black and there is no way to see where you're going around in there short of using the spider ball and bombing, bombing, bombing. And eventually there are some blocks you want to break. Look down there, there is the missile upgrade. So again, there's really two things to look for, the missile upgrade and the energy tank. If you've already got a full supply of energy tanks, you can completely skip that one and just go for the missile upgrade and then try to get the hell out of here. Unfortunately, you will just be bombing in the dark. There's not a whole lot else you can do here, so just keep fidgeting and finagling around until you find what you're looking for. Best piece of advice I can give you is to just bomb, bomb, bomb and use the spider balls. It may help you to figure out where exactly you need to go. And because this is a lot of trial and error, and you're just going to see a lot of bombing for a couple minutes here, I really don't want to waste your time with this. You're going to be doing the same thing I'll be doing. So just take your time with it. You do want to move your way over to the left and then back over to the right, and you will eventually find what it is that you're looking for. So take that advice as you will. I'm going to go ahead and skip on through this, not to waste your time. And once we have both of the upgrades, we will see you on the other side. Okay, we're finally out of that dark cavernous mess and we're just checking our offline map to make sure we're on the right path and it looks like we are. So now we're going to continue over to the right hand side and we're going to go down this path after we get past the Metroid hole. That's where we had the energy tank. Once again, kind of useless to get to, but it's nice to refill your health if you need to. Now to go down this hatch, a couple things you can do. We're going to bear off to the left because over here, we're going to find the final piece of Samus's suit upgrade. And again, this is not one that you have to have, but it's one that you definitely want to have. Always nice to get a missile refill here, back up to 230. And that should be more than enough to take care of all the Metroids in this section. And it may be enough to get through the rest of the game here. I don't know. I do know there are at least one or two more missile upgrades and we will be getting them as we proceed through the game here. But anyway, spider ball yourself up, blast that brick, and here you're gonna find the last piece of Samus's suit here. The way you get it is very simple. Just keep moving to the left. And oh, by the way, before you do that, you have another Zeta Metroid. Yes, these things are annoying. So a couple ways you can do it. If you can manage to get it in a position where you can hit it straight on, you can get the 20 shots fairly easily here. Unfortunately, the thing that really sucks about these Metroid types is that they can actually go and clip through the walls. They can clip through the ceiling, the walls. Now right here we got lucky, we got it in a nice little rhythm and pattern. So you can jump and shoot, jump and shoot, and we should be able to get it fairly easily as long as we can just keep that clear line of sight, and that should do it. There we go, another Zeta Metroid down and in the books. I think we've only got one left to go in this particular section. And here we are very close. You can kind of see the Chozo statue up there. We just have to find a way to get up there to get the final suit upgrade. And you're not gonna find it this way. Instead, you're gonna have to bounce and jump your way over here, bomb this area in the ceiling, and then you can jump up. Now we are behind the Chozo statue and we have to go down, break this block brick stone, whatever it is. There is a false floor and you're gonna have another ceiling to bomb through. And then we can go up and finally get the upgrade in this Chozo statue. Can we finally do it? Yes, we can. So go ahead, shoot through it. Don't miss like I just did. And here is the screw attack. Yes, this is synonymous with all Metroid games, especially from Super Metroid going forward. But what does it do? Basically, whenever you jump and space jump, anything that you touch with Samus while in the air will immediately die and explode with... Pretty much, I can't think of any exceptions where it wouldn't happen, except with bosses, of course. But that is an amazingly awesome upgrade to have. And even more important than that, when you get to the end and you have the final few Metroids before the Queen, we'll, we'll talk more about that when we get there. But yes, it is an absolutely awesome upgrade to have. I'm glad that we have it now. But that's it for suit upgrades. We've gotten the very last one. So we can now continue forward with the rest of the game here. We just have to take out the remaining eight Metroids with our missiles only, without using any beams, and the pro challenge will be completed here. And honestly, I've got to say, this has not been that difficult of a challenge up to this point. I thought it would be a lot tougher. There were one or two sections where it got a little bit dicey because we got low on missiles. Obviously, we're going to continue to refill as we need to. But uh, the only other section I can foresee being a possible problem is going to be down toward the end right before the Queen Metroid. And if you know, if you played this game, obviously, you know exactly what I'm talking about. 
For me, obviously, this is a blind playthrough, so I'm kind of talking out of you-know-what, but I can only anticipate and imagine how bad it's going to be when I get there. Oh, by the way, this Metroid sucks. It's a Gamma, yes, but take a look at this. You get up here by either space jumping or spider balling, and you have very limited room to maneuver around. You have only three platforms, a couple on the wall, and if you jump too high, you get hit by the spikes. So this is definitely a tricky fight with a Gamma Metroid, of all things. But thankfully, 10 shots will do the trick, and we got rid of it. So I'm <laughs> very glad that's over and done with and out of the way. We have seven left to go, and only one more in this section, thankfully, until we're done with section six. But we're going to continue on to get out of here. And here is an energy tank. Well, not energy tank, but energy refill. And the way you get to it's fairly simple. You just have to bomb your way over there or go through a false wall, go straight down, and there it is. So that wasn't too bad. Very nice to have. You're probably going to take a bit of damage here if you don't know how to handle that boss fight with the Gamma, but we did, and it's out of the way. So now, what do we do from here? Well, clearly, we have to fall straight down. You can go straight down, or you can spider ball your way down if you don't know what's coming up here. We're going to go all the way down, and I will tell you that there is a missile upgrade down here. You just have to be able to bomb your way through like this, go down through the wall, and you'll be able to get what you need. Now, why I did that and jumped away from it, I don't know. I was being ridiculous. But there is the missile upgrade. All I had to do was go through the wall. So forgive the idiocy here. We're just going to edit and speed through this, and we will catch you after we get the missile upgrade. Okay, we're finally done with that fiasco. We can bounce out of there or jump out of there, whatever it takes. And we have completed all of the Metroids with the exception of one. And we're going to go down a little bit and take care of that very last one. I know exactly where it is according to my mini-map here. So we're going to start to go down once it is safe. And I believe it is. So all the way down. Don't get whacked by the spikes here. That would be embarrassing, of course. So a little bit further down. Don't forget about that enemy. And the last Metroid for this section is going to be here. And no coincidence, it's another area with a bunch of spikes that requires space jumping. So we're just going to jump all the way across. Should be able to do it fairly easily at this point. So continue to move over here. Doing a pretty fair job at this point. And the final Metroid should be right over here. And, ooh, look at this. It is a blinking Gamma, which we all know what that means at this point. It is another Zeta Metroid in the sand. And we are confined to the sand right now. Yeah, we could blow it apart if we had a beam, but we don't. But guess what? It's gone. This is the easiest Zeta Metroid and arguably the easiest Metroid in the entire game. That's all it takes. Yeah, they built it up for nothing here. Made you think that you were going to get wiped out because you had no room to escape. No, it is the easiest Metroid in all of existence for that purpose. Because he has nowhere to go. And there's the Earthquake, by the way. So that takes care of Section 6. We're down to 6 Metroids, or 5 plus the Queen. Now, I will tell you that four of these remaining six Metroids are a type that we have never seen before, and they are even tougher than the Zetas. And they're pretty tough when you fight them without being confined in there. So the question is, what is the only Metroid left that we haven't hit yet that's not the Queen? Well, you're going to see, and it's quite nasty if you're not prepared for it. All right, so we're going to backtrack a little bit. We're going to go to the point where we can move on to Section 7. And I'll tell you right now, Section 7 and Section 8, for that matter, have two Metroids combined total here. So, yeah, one Metroid apiece per section. So we're moving down. We're going to start moving towards Section 7. A little bit of backtracking. Just a little bit more. We're going to go back quite a bit. And eventually, we'll come to this section, the area right over here. No, we've already been here before. We're going to keep going down. And I believe it's right here. Yes. So now we have spikes on the ceiling. We haven't seen this yet. We're going to do a lot of downward traversing into this new area here. And it's not a whole lot of you know stuff that we haven't seen before. It's just a lot of spikes, a lot of caverns. You may have a couple enemies here and there, but for the most part, it's pretty much a, just a straightforward walk, very linear in nature, just like a lot of these sections are. A lot of these later sections are pretty straight cakewalks. We've seen that enemy type before come out of the wall, now it comes out of the floor, so nothing new. Feel free to space jump your way over this, pretty simplistic. And we're definitely in Section 7 at this point. We're just doing a lot of linear traversing of caverns right now. Keep on moving on down. You might get hit by an enemy every now and then, but it's pretty, pretty simple. We're basically at full life, almost at full missile capacity, minus that fight we have with the Zeta back there. By the way, I'll tell you right now, there are no more Zeta Metroids in the entire game. There were only three, possibly four, and they were all in that one section. So we're done with all that. 
We're going to continue moving forward into Section 8 almost. Yeah, Section 7 really, to my knowledge, has no Metroids. It's just a small area that combines Section 6 and 8. So we're going to continue moving over this way. Yeah, there's definitely no Metroids in this area. But you will see that as we move into Section 8 up north, there are only two Metroids. One of them is a very simple Alpha Metroid. Yes, I know, an Alpha Metroid this late in the game? you think it would be a Zeta, or at least a Gamma. But no, we have one Alpha for sure, and then we have the other one is a brand new Metroid that we've never run across and seen before. And you're going to see it in just a little bit here. So let's continue moving on. Just a whole lot of simplistic stuff here. Very one-way, very linear for right now. We're just about there. Continue moving up. Yeah, not a whole lot to see here. Just a lot of simple enemies we've already run across a million times. You have lava water, whatever you want to call it. Not a whole lot. Here we go, by the way. Here is that Alpha Metroid. Yes, I said Alpha Metroid coming out of a pod. Why they have one this late in the game, I don't know. But take advantage of it. Enjoy it now because the one you fight after this will be not so simple to say the least. Now that knocks us down to five. You can continue going over right, and the final Metroid in this section is over to the right, but for whatever reason, he doesn't always spawn until you back up here. Yeah, you have to trigger the Earthquake and the Lava before you can go back and fight this Metroid again. So the Earthquake's been triggered. We're gonna go back down, a little bit of backtracking, and then we're gonna head back over into that section. I don't know if you have to backtrack quite this far, but I know that from experience, from what I've seen in previous walkthroughs, you do have to backtrack a little bit, if not a couple screens, and then you can go back to where we fought the Alpha, and I think we're probably safe right now. We can go back to where the Alpha was. Yeah, this is where you're going to go once... Yeah, you're going to go down in this area. Clearly, we can't right now because it's filled with lava, or acid, whatever you want to call it. So we're clear to backtrack at this point. We're going to go back to where the Alpha Metroid was, and we're going to find a second Metroid just beyond where the Hatchling Pod was. And as I said, it's going to be the brand new Metroid type that we haven't seen before. I think I mentioned its name once or twice a long time ago in a couple previous parts of this challenge. And you're about to see it firsthand. We are now back in that same room with the acid lava water, whatever it is. We're kind of coming up on the Hatchling Pod. Here's the next one. It's not a Zeta. It is an Omega. That's right. First time you've seen one. There are four in the game. And much like the Zetas, you cannot hit them from the top or the bottom. You have to hit them from the left or the right. Now, fortunately, the good thing is if you hit one, it will freeze in motion, freeze in place, and will not move for the most part. So hit it as hard and fast as you possibly can. Rapid fire hit that shot button. We made that look pretty easy, but trust me, it is not. It took 40 missiles. Yes, 40. 4-0 missiles to take that one Omega Metroid down. And there are three more to go in this game, so we just filled you in on what's left to go, right? Three Omegas and the Queen. By the way, there's that Earthquake signifying we're good to go. Now, you could go this way to get back down to where we were, or you could go back the original way that we backtracked. Either way, it will get you to the same area. It does not matter. So take your pick, take your choice. They will both go the same way, and the enemies are very simplistic. By the way, if you manage to take these enemies out, sometimes they will give you 30 HP, or they'll give you a supply of missiles. It's hit or miss. Right now we've got, what, 145 missiles. We're in pretty good shape. Now, bear in mind, with three Omegas left, let's do the math here. We have 145 missiles in our stockpile. It takes 40 missiles apiece times three Omegas. That's 120 missiles minimum that we need to take out these three remaining Omegas. So right now you want to be very conservative and cautious with your missile supply. You might want to consider using bombs and especially that screw attack. This is where I told you that that screw attack will come in handy particularly if you can't find another missile supply refill, which I don't think there are any up to this point where you get to the Omegas late in the game. Unless you want to backtrack a little bit, which you certainly can, but I'm not one to backtrack unless I absolutely have to. So we're going to keep moving on forward here. This section of the game is very simple. Just have some rocks floating around. Very simple enemies. I honestly don't know why I'm wasting my missile supply on them. Maybe because I like to play dangerously and give myself a challenge. Or I could just be not thinking right now. Either way, going to continue ahead. 141 missiles, which means we have 21 to spare. And we have that screw attack. We definitely want to utilize it as we move into Section 8, if we're not already there. And I think we're approaching Section 9 if we're not there already. So we're just going to continue moving forward. Very linear at this point. Keep on moving, moving. Nothing we haven't already seen. A lot of enemies that are just going to crawl on the wall like those wall slugs. 
just a vertical climb and eventually we will get into the area with the three Omega Metroids. And I will tell you there's a save point there as well. So we are definitely gonna take out one of these Omegas, if not all three of them. And then we'll make a judgment call. Once we get to the point, we'll see how much health we have left, how many missiles we have left. We're definitely in section nine by this point. So we're just doing a long vertical climb up this shaft, up this hill. Now we're moving along here. We should definitely be there by now. Yep, here is a save point. Use it if you need to. It would not be a bad play, honestly. But we're going to continue moving on forward. We're going to press our luck, and we're going to try to take out some of these Omegas here. So we're going to go up, up, up. Long vertical climb here. There is definitely an Omega close by, I can tell you. We haven't seen the hatchling pod, but it's definitely up here. Just going to space screw jump all the way up, up, up. And if you have a mini map, it's definitely worth looking at. Although I'll tell you, it's very simplistic. There are almost zero enemies between here and the three Omegas that are remaining. And we're going to go over here, or we could go up north. It's your pick. Either way, you can explore both options. Just to take a look, there's nothing up here. So <laughs> you can feel free to bomb, take a look. There's nothing there. So we are going to head over to the right. Trust me, there's nothing over there. You can look for yourself. There's nothing. So we're going to head up north. Trust me, there's nothing there. All the way up north, screw spin yourself up there, and we will eventually find this next Omega. We're just making doubly sure, because again, this is essentially a blind playthrough for me, for me, remember. We are just about ready to go. Move over to the right. No Omega just yet, but it is coming. Now we're gonna head up, there's nothing to the bottom. Just continue heading on up north. We will go all the way up. If you head to the right, it will lead to the next section with a save point and an Omega. We're going to start encountering our first one. Now here, just space jump across all this stuff. This is like crystal bubbles, whatever you want to call them, I don't know. There will for sure be an Omega on the other line in the other room here. So get ready, make sure your missiles are equipped. And we're going to take one on, head on here. Get a good line of sight, just like the Zeta Metroids. And if, yep, there's the Hatchling Pod, the Omega should be in here. Right about over here, yep, there it is, ready and waiting for us. So let's get ready to blast this thing. Now, if you can manage to get yourself in that little alcove, this should be a rather, well, I don't want to say easy, but easier fight than it needs to be. As I said, with these Omegas are kind of interesting. Once you hit one, it will freeze in place, but you want to get into a level line where you can actually hit this thing and slow it down. Remember, we've only got about, what, 19 missiles, 21 missiles to give as far as leeway. So you need to make every single missile count. If you happen to miss, you're gonna have to waste time Collecting a whole bunch of missiles off of stupid enemies here, and there aren't many left obviously. All right, that takes care of that We now have two more Omega Metroids to go. We got 111 missiles left So we still have at this point. We got 31 extra missiles to give we're in pretty good shape We have a lot of room for leeway and air, so we're not in terrible position right now But I think given where we're at at this juncture in the game also given the fact that we're coming up on 30 minutes in the video most likely we're going to go ahead and jump to the save, and we will save the end of the game for the final next part of this video challenge here. So we're going to end part four by going to a save, and we will conclude the challenge and the gameplay in part five. So thankfully, there is a save point to go through. We're going to continue over to the right and backtrack. Yes, there are spikes there, so it is necessary. Now, if you head south in that hole right there, it will take you to the final section of the game, section number 10. But if you try to go that way without taking care of all of the Omegas, your path will be barred and blocked. So you cannot go that way, despite the fact that it looks like you can. So forget about it for now, just keep heading over this way. And you have the option to take on the final Omega Metroids, or you can go to the save point, which is what we're gonna do right now. Now the final save point in this game is gonna be up here, or at least the final one that we're gonna utilize. Go all the way up here. But there is one final save point right before you hit the queen and her guardians. But as I said, we'll save that for later. We'll hit the save point here. Thank you so much, as always, for watching. Take care. We'll see you in the final part of this challenge.